Hi guys, it's Claris and welcome to another video tutorial with me. In this video we are going to be painting some Larkspur. So this is a beginner friendly video. This is a video to um, do if you're trying to focus on blending and trying to get some nice lights and darks in your florals. I'm going to keep this super short and simple for beginners so this will be a short and sweet video. So let's talk about my supplies really quickly and then we can move from there. So I am using my 36 set of White Knights. I do have two brushes handy here, the Princeton number no. 6 round and then the Around Miniature number no. 2 from Zen Art Supplies. I've got my palette ready by Lisi Arts and I have my Etcher Sketchbook Hot Press ready over here. So that's what I'll be painting on today. And for our reference image, this is what Larkspur looks like. I know I showed it to you in the beginning, but showing it to you again. And so we'll be using some nice violets. And let's just see. A little bit of violet, a little bit of the indantherine blue, most likely. Yes, violet, indantherine blue. And then for our greens, we can use either chromium oxide or just green. All right, so let's begin. So I'll just be doing one sprig of these and then you guys have the um, freedom to sort of use the whole page and just go crazy doing a ton of different sprigs, okay? And I wanna see your work, so please do tag me on Instagram or send me an email, whatever floats your boat. All right, so getting some off my violet, I'm just gonna mix a little bit of that on here. Onto my palette, off to the side here if you can see. And then I'm going to get a little bit of the indantherine blue as well. Mix that over here. So these are the two blends we'll be using. And what we want to do is lay down a light color of petals using our number six. And then we want to go ahead and use um, the number one to sort of get some darker tones and get some blending happening in there, okay? So let's do that really quickly. All right, so for these petals, these petals are really cute and they're very kind of flowy at the edges. So we're gonna keep them loose and try and get some nice organic shapes using our number six, okay? So I'll get some of the violet first. Sorry, I'm gonna get some of the indanthrene blue first. I know. There, I have a mixture of that on my brush right now, and that's okay. So making sure I don't have too much water on my brush so it doesn't pool when we're painting. I'm going to go ahead and start painting um, a flower right here. And we're doing one petal at a time. So I'm doing one little curvy stroke and then creating another one to sort of close up that petal just like that. We'll do another one over here. Notice how I'm kind of like using all different pressure points, pressure points, um, kind of using, <laughs> pressing down my brush to get more coverage for these petals. And again, let's do another one. I'm leaving white space in between the petals. White space is integral when it comes to loose style of painting, guys. And we are going to be doing four, five strokes, five petals, okay? So this is like a flower that's facing straight up. Okay, nice and light, perfect. I'm gonna get a little bit of that violet and do a couple more kind of touching this flower. And for this one, again, I want to create these florals light, loose, and while it's easy to do straight up flowers, um, some of them are going to be, because they're in bunches, it's going to look like they are just sort of behind one another. So it's okay to do one that looks like this. If you just do one petal there, another one off to the side, another one kind of in the background, and then there you go, you've got like a flower that's up facing upward, okay? And I am alternating between the purple and the blue. And again, let's do another one over here on this side. Similar kind of idea that we had at the top. Keeping it very loose-ended, making it seem like it is 
in the background. Here's another one. So what I would suggest is maybe do a couple that look, they're facing, like you can see all their petals facing upward, and then surround them with a little bit of coverage like this. And then I'm just doing one more at the top here. Okay, let's do another one here. And then I promise that's it. So get used to kind of just creating that on such a loose, uh, organic level. So now I'm gonna take my miniature brush and I've noticed I've left the centers open because we're gonna go in with a little bit of green for that and right now I'm gonna take some of the indanthrine blue onto my brush and I'm just going to add a couple of strokes at the edges of these that I've just laid painted in. So the miniature brush is great for coverage where you're not looking to do a whole bunch, paint a whole area, you're just looking to get maybe just the edge of the petal. And the key to doing this is making sure that your petal is still damp. Now, if you are not getting um, the dampness, like if your petals have already dried up, it is most likely that uh, you're not using 100% cotton paper, which means that it dries up sooner. Or maybe you've just paused the video and you've come back to it and you've sort of uh, lost that opportunity to do this highlights or shadowy effects at the top. Uh, in which case I would suggest go ahead and still do the edge. See how I'm doing that over here. Right, and you can take another brush. I'm gonna introduce the number four, silver black velvet, and with just water on it, just go ahead and blend it in. And you'll get that nice soft edge. Okay, that's it, that's all you have to do. It's one extra step, but again, if you have missed out on the opportunity and would like to have that, you can try this. It is a great technique. Now I'm getting some of the violet. I'm gonna do that technique for these flowers here because these are definitely dried up. And I'm just kind of doing them in and around this first flower first, and then going in with this and blending. Getting some more water. And I'm not painting the whole petal in. I just want a little bit of blend happening. So just a couple areas. Perfect. I'm gonna get some more, oops, switch my brushes. That can happen. Going back to my miniature, getting some of that violet. Here we go for the next set. And so I'm just sporadically just adding this certain areas of my flower. Now if you want a softer blend, you have to be a little more intentional in how you press down and swish the color around really. I'm just going to get a little bit more of that purple because this blend just di didn't, it's not giving me that dark to light. So I'm just going in with a little bit more of a darker purple to enhance that. And there we go. We've got that. I love it. I am moving on to do the green. So for the green, like I mentioned, we're using, you can either use green or you can use oxide, oxide, chromi chromium oxide. <clears throat> so I'm just mixing a little bit of that and I'm going to use my miniature brush. So here we go, just getting some green directly from the cake, mixing it onto my palette and 
you can see that the stems are very thin and whimsical and they've got these thyme-like leaves or I don't know tendril they are not really tendrils but like they're straight yeah so we're gonna do some of that so first we're just kind of lightly grazing the sheet with this brush to get this nice thin stroke and connecting our florals I'm going to get a little bit of that darker green and just add it at the edges or where the flowers connect. Just to give it some oomph. Then going back to the, the regular green that we have and just lightly adding these thin little lines to have it join to a stem. So they're very delicate and they're very fine. And then we'll do the rest of the stem in one swoosh. Ready? Here we go. So I'm going to start from the top. And there we go. We have done our stem. Now you can notice, you notice that my stem is almost like a dry stroke. So I'm just going to try and get a little bit more of a wet stroke, at least for the top half. I like the dry look, but at least for the top, I want to get a little bit of a darker stem. So I just enhance that. And now we'll do the little um, time-like leaves <laughs> that I like to call it. So I'm just using the tip of the brush again to graze and create these thin looking strokes. And you can mix your colors, like the greens, between the two greens that I mentioned. You can see I've got more lighter, sorry, drier strokes over here as well. We're just going to create a couple more. them sticking out here and there. And it's a very cute, delicate sprig of flowers. We'll have some kind of poking out from here as well. The ones that are poking out from in between the flowers, I would suggest making them a darker green. Um, just to give a little more dimension, sort of, to your, to your little sprig. Alright, so that's that. Um, they do have these little tiny bud-like elements over here. So we're going to try and do that as well, and then we'll end off, okay? So now for this, there's... Whoops. So now for this, there is a little bit of swiping or taking off color. So let's just do one sprig. I don't know. Like, let's just have that sprig happening over here. And it came out a little too thick compared to the other one, but that's okay. I'll figure something out after. So we've got one there. And let's just do a couple of strokes to kind of enhance and create more opportunities for buds. So I'm just doing some here, here, one more here. And now, dipping my brush in water, I'm going to go back and I'm just going to press down and create these little shapes. That's a little bit too big, so I'm going to go smaller better and I'm quickly quickly painting these in because then I want to go in with my next brush and with just water I want to swipe off so I'll take the use the Princeton 6 or I'm going to take the number 4 and I'm swiping off the color and just take the paper towel so you can swipe and just dab it on paper towel and the reason we're doing this is because we want it to dry up a lot lighter in comparison to the stem just like that and then going back in with the miniature we just want to add a little bit of a hint of green at the top of it so I'm just making sure that my the brush is nice and damp 
and then just going at the top and just adding a little bit of an enhanced and then leaving it that way. And that's it. So this way it breaks up your florals between like the nice beautiful blooms and then your your buds, I guess these are. Yeah, they're definitely buds. Oh, one more thing before I end this, we got to do some green centers. And so for the green, again, feel free to use the same green we've been using all this time. And we're just going to go in and add a couple of dots in the center and sporadically in and around. I'm doing more at the top for these guys. And then obviously the ones that are that look like they're curved or facing in the other direction so you can't really see them so there's not much there. But just the ones that you are able to see, I am creating it that way. Perfect. And that's it. We are done. I'm going to show you guys a close-up of this so you can see. All right. So here's a close-up of what that looks like. You can see the details on the edges. You can see the cute little basic looking um, buds. That's the word I was looking for. So go ahead and create a whole bunch of these on your sheet. Or if you just like the one and want to create another sprig of buds up here so you kind of balance your composition, that works too. But... Yeah, that's it. If you like this video, guys, please hit the like button and hit subscribe. I would really appreciate the support and I would love to be tagged if you post this work on social media just so I can see what you guys came up with or just feel free to send me a message. I love hearing from you guys. And uh, we're still in the middle of the May challenge. So for those of you who are interested, you should definitely check it out. I have listed a link below. It's four weeks of intense and fun watercolor. So hope you guys will join me. And thanks again for watching my video and liking it.